What's up? I am David Long. Nice to see you today. Many of you know me as an integral philosopher, as a teacher of integral theory, and maybe even as a critic of people like Ken Wilber or Steve McIntosh, people who I think are getting integral wrong. And people often ask me how I would improve things, or how I would do integral better, or how I would want to upgrade the integral map to make it better. And so that is what we're going to talk about here today. What's the difference between Wilberian integral and Davidian integral? Davidian sounds better than Longian, so Davidian integral, my perspective on integral. Tell me what you think in the comments. I'm definitely open to your perspective, open to refinement. I think integral in general should be an ongoing peer review thing where we can refine and make these maps better and better over time. So let's do that together. Let me submit for your approval my Davidian integral map. Let's go. If you're thinking, what is integral? Who is Ken Wilber? What is this colorful map behind this man? You should probably go back to my main channel and check out my intro to integral theory video and probably start there. This video is for people who have a more nuanced understanding of integral theory and what's going on in the integral community already. So for most people, including me, this was my first map and I had a little cut out version of it and I used it to teach a lot of people and to teach myself. Then eventually I upgraded to this map, as you can see, it's got a few extra bells and whistles on there, a couple other charts as well to kind of flesh it out and be able to point to more things and give more detail. So this map has been really good. I've taught a lot of people integral theory on this map. I've had this map probably for five years. This initial map, the first one we showed, was actually made in 2007, it says on the side. So it's probably about time for an upgrade. All this talk about figuring out integral theory together and figuring out what the best upgrades are and stuff like that really got me thinking. And so I decided to work on an upgraded, better version of the map for myself and to kind of upgrade my own personal map. And so this is what that looks like. Now, if we just look at the aesthetics, it's not quite as colorful. It's a lot more toned down. It doesn't look like a Crayola explosion or something like that. It's still got some colors, but they're more muted, just enough to give you the sense of what these colors are doing without being like a color explosion. Also, notice up here that for the quadrants, you actually have like four or five quadrant maps put together on top of each other. So instead of having to look at this map and that map, you can get all the maps. So the other map is good. It's more of a beginner's kind of map. It doesn't have as much detail on it. Because it's actually looking a little bit less simple, that actually might be a benefit, especially if you're a newbie. This kind of a map might intimidate you. Although, let's be honest, having the whole philosophy basically fit on one page is pretty simple, no matter how much you fit on that page. Now, I will say that I've made adjustments to each one of the lenses. So let's start with quadrants. The main adjustment I've made to the quadrants is around this concept of tetra arising. And that's why I've included this cosmology map over here, which has to do with the arising of consciousness and time, right? And I've also added this one, two, three, four, and one, two, three, four of epistemology and ontology, meaning that the world arises in a particular order in terms of quadrants and that we experience the world in a particular order in terms of quadrants. And there's probably also a hierarchy of importance in terms of the quadrants. Like for example, I say that I think goodness is the most important thing, but to really understand what's good, you have to understand what's true and then you wanna make that beautiful. Anyways, so they do harmonize. I do think if you make your ultimate focus beauty or something like that, you'll get led astray. You can mess up the hierarchy, I think. So this version of the quadrants, along with this map down here, you have cosmology, epistemology, and ontology. So an emergentist metaphysics is included in this map. So before, Wilbur had attributed a lot of upper left quadrant phenomenon to upper right quadrant things. Like basically he was saying that chemistry was a form of irritability. And all of this is just working backwards from his story about consciousness before the Big Bang, which I talk about in my What You Talking About Wilbur series and my video, I Am This Before the Big Bang Debunked. Link in the description. So this story that Ken Wilber tells about Eros and Agape as this love energy that moves and animates and expands the cosmos, that's nice poetry, but that's not 
science, that's mythology. And basically, a lot of what his project is, is to try and talk about things that normally only science can talk about in third-person language and first-person language, which is why he's willing to extend agency and personify polons that are way far down the spiral and are not really conscious and don't really have these kinds of feelings, like they're not really aggravated or irritated or whatever. So I correlate the unfolding first-person experience in line with the cosmology as it's suggested by science. A saner view of evolution. And in the upper right quadrant, it goes all the way down to zero, which is just energy. And I don't feel tempted to personify that energy, except, of course, in the way in which we do embody it. All right, let's talk levels. Notice there's no third tier really on my map. I'm up for debate about what the third tier could possibly be, or if there's something like that. I think a lot of that stuff is yet to be seen. On the previous maps, you see Orobindo's state stages stacked on top with these mystical ideas about what a third tier would look like. And I don't think it has anything to do with Orobindo state stages and any of that kind of stuff. And neither does Don Beck, by the way. I asked Don Beck what he thought about this, what he thought about Orobindo's Eastern spiritual mystical ideas as representing some kind of possible third tier of awakening and he basically said that it's a bunch of crap. I reject all of this. Ken Wilber's assumption that mystics represent the highest stages of development and the integration of Horabendo's third tier stages. It's yet another example of Wilber's attempt to exploit the Graves model in spiral dynamics. He lacks entirely the seventh code of integral and has no idea how, when, where each of the codes have emerged. I will gladly challenge him to a public debate, but he still hides out in his loft in Denver. The whole idea of tears is uniquely language from our work, which he steals in order to market his. The man lacks any ethical basis when he does so. He is nothing beyond red-orange. If he wants to develop his own systems, then he should do so without exploiting my lifetime of work, which he continues to do. Our seventh and now emerging eighth code, second tier, are functional, resolve real-world problems, and emerge out of life conditions, not out of some mystical realm from Eastern viewpoints which belong to those cultures, not Western societies. The eighth code is beginning to take shape. It will not be the sixth code, green, on steroids, as many in the integral world believe. Don Beck. What integralist wouldn't want to see this debate? Ken Wilber, Don Beck is calling you out. Two of the main leaders in our community have some major disagreements about this integral map. That's important to know. So again, this is stripping the mysticism out of integral theory and getting back down to what we actually know. I've also included some of these other cool spiral dynamics visualizations as well as the integral leadership Rosetta Stone, which talks about different leadership styles and how that applies to spiral dynamics. And I had this developmental studies chart in my previous map before as well. But again, I've taken out Aurobindo and just left it with Piaget, as I have in this center line. So let's look at lines. I have moved the lines a little bit. For example, I brought transrational down to about green because transrational ability comes online at this early vision logic stage of development. And so I think that is more in line with what we know about the emergence of these things brought cosmocentric down as well. They were saying that cosmocentric perspective doesn't come online till third tier. And I think we know that these things aren't true. Maybe I should have moved post-conventional up a little bit too, since green values are now starting to become more conventional. Now this would be a good place to say that that would be a good improvement. And I'm definitely open to your criticisms like this. You know, let's make a list of them. And then next year, or in a few months or whatever, we'll come out with the newest best map with the new improvements built in and we can refine and build this thing together. So this is this is another difference between a Davidian map and that integral map. With this Davidian map, you and me, we're gonna work on refining this project together. With the Wilberian map, it comes top down to you and there's no offer to help work to refine it. I think we need to refine it. I think we need to work together to make it tighter, to make it better, and to really put some peer review together on this thing. I also brought post-post-conventional down a little bit into the top part of the holistic self because I think at this integrally informed holistic stage, you want to start to build the new integral age, which will become the new convention. So post-post-conventional, anyways. So I've also changed the name of a couple of the states, and there are reasons for this also rooted in idealism. For example, causal and gross. Causal, kind of implying this idea that consciousness, this formless, pure consciousness, is this I amness before the Big Bang, is the cause of it all. And gross, this idea of like lowly, like base. It's a derogatory term, like, oh, that's just the gross aspects of reality. Well, your face is gross. The causal aspects are the things that you really want to get in touch with. And this is some of the dirty bathwater from religions 
that we want to leave behind, this kind of life and world and nature denying kind of an impulse. We need to grow past that and start to see the world and the creation of life and nature as sacred. So let's just talk about it like waking, dream, deep sleep, non-dual states. And also in terms of the Wilbur Combs matrix and how it relates to these stages, it's no longer nature mysticism, deity mysticism, formless mysticism and non-dual. I've changed deity mysticism to archetypal, meaning dream analysis and the poetic transrational evaluation of symbolism through our understanding of archetypes and human psychology. This is a much more reasonable way of thinking about these ideas, divorced from the Eastern ideas about the Bardo realm being this actual dimension that you have to navigate when you die. I think we can understand it more correctly as an archetypal realm, more like software than like another dimension of actual reality. And in terms of types, look, this map has types. We have Briggs-Myers types and we have Enneagram types. The previous integral map didn't even really have types. All the previous map had was a mention of masculine and feminine types. So at least this map gives some insight into what those types might be like. So that's it. These are the five lenses of an integral perspective. Upgrade. Upgraded. Upgrading your cognitive operating system. And I'm making this map available for you at this link right here. It's two foot by three foot, so it's nice and big. And I would invite you to use this image instead of the previous image. Get your upgrades, get your better map, and hit me up down below. Let me know what you think further upgrades should be. Let's argue about parts of this map and what should be fixed and how it could be better. And then get ready for 2.0. Let's get this Davidian refinement going. Again, this is not a process Wilbur wants to engage in, but let's do it. Let's use peer review and let's make our maps better. So we've covered the stuff that has to do with Aqual or the map, but there are some other important differences between the way I think we should be doing things and the way Wilbur thinks that we should be doing things. Some of you might know that I'm the founding leader of the Integral Emergentist Revolutionary Movement. And we have a short summary on our group page that describes the ways in which we're different from Wilburian Integral. Things like no creationism or the idea of spirit underlying everything, no idea of an inherent telos to the cosmos. Consciousness is an emergent quality of matter, not the source of it. Making skillful pre-trans distinctions. Epistemic skillfulness and humility, not making claims that we can't back up. More becoming, creating, and self-mastery, not just self-transcendence practices. So for example, as I've said in a couple of my videos, I would really like to see more of the pagan self-creation kind of practices be included in some of this stuff. I would rather see it be more about a movement and a lifestyle than just products and events. Some of these events are crazily priced. That's another major difference. I basically give everything away for free. I make it all available to you and I ask for donations. By the way, I could really use the support because I'm not making money like Wilbur and I'd like to make a lot more content. I'll put a link to my Patreon at the end. Integral isn't just an economic elite. All of these things, this information, this stuff needs to be made affordable, accessible. I think that's really important. And of course, I think it's important to embrace disagreements and have debates and have this kind of peer review, move things further. Also, get your I Am Philosopher King merch. Boom. Wilbur makes a point of saying we're not in the transformation business. And a lot of the programs that Integral has made so far are like hacks into this system or that system. And I think translation and transformation are both important and appropriate in different circumstances. And I think right now in the world that we live in, more and more, we need transformative new systems. So these are some of my main disagreements, my main ideas about how we could be doing things better. And I'm currently in the process of making videos like my What You Talking About Wilbur series that explores each of these points one by one. And that's gonna take me a little bit of time, but I'll certainly get to it. This is a good kind of general brief outline though of all of my areas of disagreement and how I think we could in general be doing it better. I hope you enjoyed this video and I hope you resonate with a lot of these points. Definitely hit me up in the description and let me know what you think. If you like this video, smash like down below. Make sure you've subscribed. Please support me on Patreon. I could really use the support. I would love to be able to make videos for you full time. Also, if you haven't yet, make sure you check out my What You Talking About Wilbur series. I'm gonna have more of those videos coming for you soon. I hope you have a wonderful day. Thanks so much for listening to me. Peace.